Hello and welcome everyone. We are back today on the 7th of May 2022 and Michael's joined with me here on Skype and I know that he's had a busy week and so have I and here we are at part 30 of Michael's script on conspiracies Kennedy ritual part number five. Welcome Michael. Yeah, welcome, Brett, and hello, dear listeners. Now we're getting into the, <laughs> how to say, the underground of the information what is usually not available to the general public. And this is just the beginning of all the mess because I'm just really sick and tired of all the things of going into all the details about any buildings and any street and any this and any that. But let's go to the absolute facts. So this is the script of part 30 already, Bob the Builder. Why Bob the Builder? Well, of course, it is an example of the famous television series. What does that have to do with the Kennedy assassination? Well, let's find out. First of all, I'd like to remind you of a former session about the Texas School Book Depository. But I said, oh, yeah, that does that look like a regular depository? Ah, of course, that's a Freemason site, that's a Freemason building, etc., etc., etc. And you see also the entrance with columns. And this is, of course, according to the Bible, where you see that is uh, the columns called Boaz and Yakin, two copper, brass, or bronze pillars who stood on the porch of Solomon's temple, the first temple in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. These are symbols in Freemasonry and sometimes in religious architecture. Yes. Yachin and Boas, but you have other examples. According to the biblical tradition, King Solomon had them made by Hiram a bronze smite from Tyrus. The text describing the pillars and their ornamentation is found in the first book of Kings as part of the description of the construction of the temple and the parallel passage in Jeremiah 52. Yes, the Hebrew text is corrupted and difficult to understand. Yeah, but the Bible is also difficult to understand to people who are not supposed to get the meaning. And this is also a privilege which you should not underestimate. If you understand the Bible correctly, then you have a, such a huge benefit. I think that is the biggest benefit you ever can achieve in your life. And it is not given to you by random, but by God. So if you can really understand the message of God, then you know the truth. But the problem is that this world is rejecting Christ and therefore rejecting God's plan of salvation. And therefore, they don't understand the Bible. They don't take it seriously. And that's the real problem with it. Because everything which is, is, uh, has to do with rituals is about religious rituals. Also, the 9-11 Twin Towers rituals has something to do with twin pillars, of course, with the book of Revelation 9-11, Apollyon, etc., etc. I found an interesting page, but that interesting page makes the wrong assumption because they claim that uh, Roman Catholicism is Christianity and therefore you know that uh, there is almost no website that I can recommend. I cannot recommend any website. What I can recommend is to look to symbology when it comes down to religious rituals. Religious rituals and the killing of Kennedy was a religious ritual as well. Because Freemason, let's face it, folks, is a religious secret society. It has nothing to do with the, ah, a nice club of older gentlemen who are, have, are able and have some skills. Therefore, you have in the architecture also, you have the hindsight that has something to do with the temple, like the Temple of Solomon, Joachim and Boaz here. And uh, also you see that resemblance to the Tree of Life, so to speak, to the Kabbalah. Uh, when you see that in that architecture, uh, you see the different stations there. Hmm? Da, 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 da. Yeah, you have that all combined. But of course, they won't tell you this because it is a secret society. What are secret societies for? To keep secrets. Yeah. So that is the thing that uh, all the hidden symbology, all the hidden meaning is not uh, been meant for the general public because these guys, they want to be 
exclusively uh, behind their buildings and uh, they can proclaim and they can then move on with their agenda without the general public being totally unaware of anything and they think that oh yeah the Ukraine war and all of this and that is just happening by random some evil people and uh, uh, <laughs> that there are some politicians who want to drain the sum oh yeah sure mm -hmm. Yeah, to get to a position in uh, politics, yeah, you have to be part of the sump, actually. <laughs> oh, you mean the swamp? Ah, the swamp, yes, the yeah. swamp thing. <laughs> yeah, ah, the swamp. Okay. Drain okay. the swamp, yes, uh, I'm okay. very familiar with that one, yeah. Yeah, okay, so then, uh, okay, the swamp thing. Ah, let's face it. What? I thought it was a horror movie. Yes, the swamp thing. There mm -hmm. we go. Yeah, okay. So that's more like it. This is just uh, entertainment for adults, huh? Yeah, and so every ritual has something to do with re religion because that's what rituals actually are for. It's not just for the, the appeasement for people that, yeah, okay, you got your midnight movie now and this is now a double feature. On the one hand, it is a Kennedy assassination. On the other hand, it is Watergate. Or on the one hand, it is 9-11. On the other hand, it is the Iraq war. You know, everything is connected. Yeah, so they are approaching with the agenda from one goal to the next goal. So Kennedy was just a step. And uh, then we will move on to the other things. There are so many people who have uh, foreknowledge and therefore this 9-11 uh, ritual also has to go according to some numerology to Kabbalah has to go according to their system. But we done already a session about that of uh, Story 77 and Flight 93. Yeah, so this is all symbology. It has nothing to do with the, the real events, actually. It's just not that it, it must happen. It just uh, the, the general audience must believe it. That's the, the thing. It is about religion. It is about belief. Yeah, so when you go about uh, Freemasonry, for example, you got the uh, famous number 33. And uh, Building 7, of course, was evacuated on 3.30 p.m. by the 33rd Commissioner, so to speak, of the New York Fire Department. And you got also more, many, 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 many other resemblances to Freemasonry. But I don't want to uh, spend so much precious time on that because everything, of course, is related to the Church, yeah, which is the Roman Catholic Church in general consisting of several branches, for example, the most infamous should be the Jesuits nowadays. So that everybody has been briefed before and nobody would get a certain decent or supreme position in the United States Senate or anywhere else who is not briefed and checked before by these clergymen who actually are the deep state. Yeah, so if you see all the different connections, yeah, they got one thing in common. Yeah, they are not representative of the state. These people are representative of the deep state, and the deep state is the state which is the only state who is the combination of state and church, which is the Vatican. And this is a uh, history which is running now since uh, in the modern days since 1929 with the proclamation of the sovereignty of the Vatican by the Lateran Treaty by the Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. Yeah, that's almost 100 years. So I would expect that in 2029 that a big celebration will happen uh, in Rome. All roads lead to Rome. Yeah, and so you see that two become one, yeah, two World Trade Centers become one World Trade Center as above, so below, two pyramids in one building. That is the purpose of that building. And of course, there is an antenna because you have to be very, very, very close to their God, which is the Mammon, of course, because that uh, needs much money to build and it is forbidden in the Bible to build any skyscrapers. But the 
audience, people, general people, don't care about the Bible. They think that it's all being done by random, that uh, the Egyptian pyramids, as well as the trade center, uh, resembles uh, the uh, similarity to Orion's belt, which is then, of course, has something to do with Osiris, which is, of course, the <laughs> patron, so to speak, of Freemasonry. And what kind of a country is the United States of America has been founded officially by Freemasons? Of course, Freemasons is also a cover, but I don't care. That's the problem here that I cannot recommend any website here because the website is uh, mixing everything up because they say that, yes, the religion is all the same. Yeah, it's all the same. Christianity is a continuation of solar worship. Personified, there's somebody who cannot write and type properly. Personified, my, my, I have to correct even typos from people. And the cult of <laughs> Baal. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you see, uh, to rule planet Earth, which is not a planet, is, where to start? Where to start? Yeah. So I cannot recommend any website. I only look at, for, for websites to get some interesting facts and then I combine the thing together and then I am comparing it to the Bible. That's the method I'm using. And I have a certain uh, system with it, which I introduced in German. It is called KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, Don't uh, go for uh, fancy explanations, but just keep it simple. Yeah. Of course, the Roman Catholic Church, they have their uh, pagan trinity for uh, God. And the mother of God, Maria, and Jesus, with had nothing to do with uh, what the Bible tells you about uh, God. <laughs> Maria is excluded. Yeah, it's, it's also it is this is just true for Catholicism. But don't misjudge uh, uh, Catholicism with Christianity. It's, it's nothing to do. But you see that I think that many websites read are there for a certain purpose. Um, on the outside or on the, at first glance they seem to yeah we educate the people and this is finally blowing everything up and uh, but uh, at the second glance you see that oh no they are deceiving the people yeah yeah so you have websites who are doing it 98 percent correct but then when it comes down to the real belief that jesus christ is the only begotten son of god without him is there is no salvation <laughs> yeah then they fail because the only goal of Satan must be to keep the people uh, away from the belief in Jesus Christ. So they will not be saved. That, that is his only purpose. But that is not that the people want to see. Because people don't believe in Satan. And if they don't believe in Satan, they only, of course, they don't believe in Jesus Christ as well. So I spare you with all the details here. because. But uh, when you come down to the 33, it's interesting blah, 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 that uh, the Pope John Paul I just reigned or ruled 33 days. And it's also interesting because the the German Concordat, when it was been signed, it is not the Latin Treaty, uh, in, it was also signed in uh, with the Germany, which is still valid up to this very day. Now we are not Nazi Germany anymore officially, but the Nazi treaty with the Vatican from 1933, once again, 33, the year when the Nazi officially took over in Germany from 33 to 45. Yeah, so that is still valid today. So the Federal Republic of Germany has said and officially quoted that the uh, contract with the Roman Catholic Church, the church state contract called Concordat, is still valid up to this very day. Interesting, huh? So Nazi laws are still valid here in that country. Uh, but yeah, that's right. And it just wanted a quick point out, just so no one's confused about this. This bullet point at the top here that says Pius the 11th Lateran Treaty. That was February 11 to, let's see, it was, uh, wasn't it 1929? Yes, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Just so no one's left in the dark on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and short time later, I think it was in October or November, there was the Black Friday on the New York Stock Exchange market or so. Huh? Mm. Black Friday, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Does not happen uh, randomly. You know? Black Friday. Oh, Friday once again, because in the Roman Catholic Church, Friday usually is the, um, the day when 1929 uh, yeah yeah 1929 yeah yeah oh black friday yep there you got it the stock exchange oh it is not available in english my 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 yeah 
Ah, Black Sunday. Aha, what is that? Schwarzer Donnerstag. 24th of October. Ja, Schwarzer Freitag. Genau. So, so Black Thursday in America, but it's, it, it's similarly called Black Friday in Europe for the same event. Um, for the 24th of October 1929, yeah, for the biggest crash of the stock market in history, is mm. the, the origin of the Great Repression at the USA and the World um, Weltwirtschaftskrise, which is the World Economy Crisis. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, but let's get back to the script. Because we go, go into the religious history of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And first up is coming First Kings chapter 6. All right, so First Kings chapter 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house which King Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was three cubit, uh, three score cubits, excuse me, and the breadth thereof 20 cubits, and the height thereof 30 cubits, and the porch before the temple of the house 20 cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the house, and ten cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you very much. And then we need the last verse of that chapter. Mm. Yeah. Verse 38. Yeah. And in the eleventh year, in the month bull, which is the eighth month, was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all the fashion of it so was he seven years built in, in building it excuse me yeah so then please remember that when Solomon built the temple for god the house of the lord it has a length of three score cubits and the breadth of 20 cubits and the height of 30 cubits. And he built on that house of the Lord seven years, okay? So now I will copy this so that we can compare the two chapters together because now we will switch to the next chapter, which is chapter seven. Only read also the first three okay. verses, please. Very good. First Kings chapter 7, verse 1. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years, and he finished all, the, all his house. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was an hundred cubits, the breadth thereof 50 cubits, and the height thereof 30 cubits. Upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars and it was covered with cedar upon the beams that they lay on 45 pillars 15 in a row yes now compare that once again with the house of the lord three score cubits 20 cubits 30 cubits And now his own house is 100 cubits, 50 cubits, and 30 cubits. And he did not need seven years to finish that, but 13 years. Would you think, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, Brad? <laughs> well, I know 13 represents uh, another little interesting uh part of uh, Jewish mysticism. Uh, I don't know if that's what we're thinking here, but uh, that's almost double the time. Yes. And it is uh, much, much larger. Much, much larger. 
much much larger so what you, you see that uh, i can i can show you my thoughts in the german script but i think that is very obvious mm -hmm. what the, what what's that kind of a statement of king solomon when his own house is much more bigger and has a very very precious uh, architecture and also he built almost twice the time yeah and that's when i compared that in german i said you see that interesting here when you look at the uh, temple of solomon so the house of the lord it's, it's like a rectangular building with two pillars in place in the front yeah yachin and boas yeah like world trade center one and two for example and you got the altar and you got the holy of holies inside when you look upon the architecture inside you have the holy of holies here where only the high priest is uh, submitted to pass mm -hmm. and also the holy of holies is is also like a square huh it's that's a square a, yeah that's a square yeah it's it's like the computer chip mm -hmm. yeah computer chip also resembles a square and some people claim that also the computer chip is like the holy of holies because it's just the intelligence of the computer and it's just the holy of holies but that's not my point my point is that you see that that is the architecture of the house of the lord so you have to pass the entrance of the temple to get to the farthest point which then resembles the holy of holies where it is not submitted for the lay people to pass okay so now compare that, please, to the architecture of Freemasonry, when they have absolutely obsessed with their pyramids, which because pyramids is a symbol for hierarchy, of course. And the one on top, he's the overseer. He's like the bishop. He's like the one who's uh, who knows it all, what the people uh, on the other levels are doing. But if you are on the lower level, you don't know anything about the, the people who are doing on top of you, uh, even not who are these people actually are. So the architecture of the Freemason have nothing to do with the architecture of the temple, although they resemble strongly to the temple of Salomon, which is very interesting, but it gets worse. Because when you know Freemason uh, uh, architecture, you see their um, their squares and you see their uh, pyramids and you see all the symbolism of Freemasonry everywhere. Also in the White House, when he, here John F. Kennedy was visited by Martin Luther King. It's just one example. You see, there's all uh, occult symbology. This is a Venus uh, shell here. And uh, this is very interesting, but it gets worse. Huh? Because... Um, the uh, in the first kings seven it is salomon's own house ah that's why i came up with the <laughs> mr duck himself <laughs> good michael nice i like that one reminds me of yerk when we uh we made that special little uh present for all our friends who who uh well, may not enjoy the uh, the cartoon image of uh, of Donald Duck representing Donald Trump, mm -hmm. yeah, becoming president in 2016. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But so, when you look upon First Kings seven, then you got the verses which is is really now important are the, the verses. Um, we are talking about his own house, of course. The verses thirteen. 14 and 15. Mm. I will highlight that for you. Okay, and I'll read it. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Nephati, or excuse me, Nephtali. Yes. Mm -hmm. And his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon and wrought all his work, for he cast two pillars of brass and 18 cubits high apiece, and a line of 12 cubits did compass either of them about. Yeah, thank you, Brett. And these are the most important uh, verses which we have uh, to deal with in this and the next session. So King Solomon sent 
for somebody who was then capable of uh, building the temple or his own house, Solomon's own house, to his own desire. And he cast two pillars of brass, 18 cubits high. Can you imagine why 18? <laughs> oh, sure. Six plus six plus six. Six, so, uh, yeah, exactly. And it gets even worse. But then I have to switch again to my own script. Because now it gets really interesting. I hope so. When you look upon this uh, symbolism of the two pillars here, then also the World Trade Center complex is a temple because the Yachin and Boas here, the uh, structure, of course, resembles uh, two columns. Uh, yeah, this is also a Freemason site. Why is it a Freemason site? Well, <laughs> it is so interesting. It is so easy, actually. Um, also, you got um, segments here in the World Trade Center and usually nobody talks about that. You got three segments in the World Trade Center. Um, I have to, maybe I have to show that World Trade Center one. Yeah, you see that. You see that? One, two, three segments. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, you're you're pointing to building seven there in the in the foreground, yeah. Not, I'm not, I'm not building uh, pointing to this building. I'm just pointing to the regular WTC one and two, yeah. You got okay. sec segment one, segment two, segment three. You see, you got horizontal lines. Oh, yeah, no, tracking vertical. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's it's hard to to get them here, but usually you 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 see it. Yeah, and you see that these people, they are actually destroying the old temple to build a new temple. Yeah? So the new age has just begun in 2001, of course, <laughs> because, um, yeah, it, it was 9-11. Huh? It was uh, Apollyon. Uh, it was Revelation 9-11 once again. So it is destroying of the old temple. Yes, and of course, people have foreknowledge and they are smiling all the way because they knew exactly what to do. Therefore, they ensured these uh, pillars or these uh, structures, this World Trade Center 1 and 2, separately, few weeks before the attack against terrorist attacks. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> what a coincidence, huh? But there's another thing, which is the Second Chronicles 9.13, about Salomon's big riches and his death. And therefore, I have to switch again to the King James Bible, Second Chronicles 9.13. And I would like to ask Brother Brett to read that. Yes, there it is. Second Chronicles chapter 9, verse 13. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and six talents of gold. Yes, 666, Mike. Yes, yes. Yes, that, that is the that is the verse here. And that's when I said keep it simple, stupid, huh? The talent in the Bible is a weight. It is not a value in itself, it's just a weight. And the talent means it is 58.9 kilograms. Don't ask me, please, how much pound that is. It is about, oh, I think it is about gracious. 120 pounds. Yeah. So if you you got me on the wrong foot, so to speak. Um, we can pound. Uh, no, divided two, divided two. So 130 American pounds yeah, of gold is one talent. And I just um, calculated that in euros and in dollars uh, to the actual uh, gold um, exchange from this week. Yeah. So 666 talents of gold, what King Solomon got is about $2.3 billion. With a B. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh but and now th this is this is equivalent also to the official wealth of donald trump <laughs> about three billion u.s dollars but uh, just wait what does the bible tell you in second chronicles yeah in one year aha uh -huh. so this king solomon was the wisest guy, but the problem is he was also obviously one of the most wealthiest guys. 
and he did equip his temple or his house yeah far more elaborate and far more luxurious than the house of the lord it's it's bigger it's it took longer to establish to etc to build yeah so the <laughs> for the love of money is the rule of all evil i don't know Solomon in person of course but According to the comparison between 1 Kings 6 and 1 Kings 7, I'd say that, oh, mm, he was a little bit over the top. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that is the, so that's also when you now compare that to Revelation 13, 18, which we will do mm. in a short amount of time, Revelation 13, 18. Here you go. I hope it's big enough to read, Brad. Sure. Okay. So Here then is this... wisdom, right? Revelation, you said 13, yes? Yes. Chapter 13, last verse of the chapter, which is 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. Yes. So these are the only two times in the Bible, one in the Old Testament in the Second Chronicles and one in the New Testament in the book of Revelation, when it has been stated about the number six hundred and three score and six. The only two times. And these twos are connected because we haven't read the condition for the number of the man and 666 yeah that is here that is uh worship this is worship and therefore i think that uh, i made the error uh, i think we should read 15 to 18 actually oh sure i'll read it quickly and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed and he causeth all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. Mm -hmm. And now what is the combination of the two chapters in the Bible when they speak about 666? In the second Chronicles 913, it is the talents of gold. And in the book of Revelation, it is the condition that no man might buy or sell save he that had to mark the name of the beast or the number of his name the number of his name 666 without a 666 you might not buy or sell second chronicles tells you yeah that solomon possessed in one year 603 score and six talents of gold so both 666 uh, mentioning in the bible has something to do with wealth and power and of course with worship here in the book of revelation but it is buy and sell so it has something to do with trade it has something to do with money with material power and we know all who's the so-called god of this world in luke 4 and in matthew 4 who said that whoever will bow down and worship me i will give him um, all the uh, power and glory of this world, so to speak. Uh, I, I cannot tell that from, from memory. That is uh, most uh, obviously mentioned here in Luke 4. So that is the condition of Satan. It's been called uh, the, the Lord or the God of this world. So the little, little God of this world. Yeah, the devil said, uh, would you care to read it? Sure, Michael. Five to seven. Sure. <clears throat> We're talking, uh, we're in the book of Luke 4. Luke 4, right, okay. And the devil, taking him to an high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. 
And the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Yes. So 666, um, money and wealth, has been given to the people who are worshipping Satan. Or rather, so, those that are causing the world to worship Satan, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's uh, it, both of the mentioning of 666 in the Bible has something to do with materialistic things. Yeah, it's a, it's a talents of gold uh, at uh, King Solomon because he needed much money to build his house. And it is the number in the revelation of the number of the man. And we all know who's the most wealthiest organization in this world. Who is the most wealthiest organization of this world? This is the most powerful organization in the world with the most money. My precious. And it's a sun religion, and 666, we know that from the science of the new religion, is the um, addition of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the deacons of the zodiac. So it is a sun religion. And there's, all, there's also much more to it, because the old title of the Carios Filii Dei, so... Icarius Fidi Dei in Roman numerals also achieves 666. Either way around, you see, this has something to do uh, with materialistic things, with pagan things, actually. It has nothing to do with real uh, God believing Christian. 666 is just the number of the sun god, and the sun god, of course, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, of course, it's a pagan god. It's Nimrod. It's uh, everywhere you would like to do it. It's, it's Lucifer or Satan. Yeah. So that is the depiction here. When you when you see that the columns were 18 feet high, 666, <laughs> and uh, Solomon was being handed over 666 talents of gold, and in the book of Revelation, it's called, it is uh, the number of the man, and, and the worship has something to do with worship, and it is 666, and it is the same as Vicarius Filii Dei, then you know what it's all about. It has nothing to do. It's the anti-god. It's the anti-god who is playing with materialism, with the money and power. Yeah, and you see, you have these uh, 18, 666 uh, um, mentioned everywhere. Yeah, event 201. Yeah, on the, it happened on the 18th of October, 666. Yeah, and the scenario which they came with this uh, new worldly threat uh, will end at the 18 after 18 months, yeah, 666 with 65 million deaths. Yeah, six plus y, five is 11. Yeah, so you got all Freemasonry numerals here, numbers, 666 everywhere, everywhere. So this is indoctrination. Now, 66 is not only the number of the beast or the number of the man, because the man is called the Vicarius for the day, but it's also the number of the beast. And it is also uh, from old times, it's a ruler of the zodiac. So it is the sun god. Yeah? And what else is the Vatican um, uh, St. Peter Square doing? Huh? Whom are they worshipping? The serpent lines around their altar, who steps. Uh, steps of uh, <clears throat> even stones and uh, the sun going coming down from the roof yeah? it's it's very obvious when you really uh, read the bible and really combine all the dots but it's all indoctrination once again <clears throat> now we go into the freemason ritual once again because the freemason ritual is connected to king solomon so once again hiram abiff 
was, according to an allegory of the Freemasons, so never existed. It's not truth, it's just a legend. The architect of the temple of King Solomon of Jerusalem. You see here the so-called architect Hiram on a window of 1900 at the St. John's Church in Chester. Why St. John's Church? Because St. John is the official patron of Christianity and his birthday allegedly was at the 24th of June. 24 of June, which is the opposition of the 24 of December. Mm -hmm. Six months, exactly. Yeah. So nobody knows what the actual birthday of the real John, of John the Revelator, of the John the Baptist would be. But uh, the, of course, in legend tells it all. Huh? So Hiram, and that is the problem because that has nothing to do with the real history which has been mentioned in the Bible. Now I can really have to really move back to 1 Kings 7, verse 13. <clears throat> because King Solomon sent out and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was also a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to works all work in brass. And he came to Solomon and wrought all his work. So it was a Hiram out of Tyre. There is no above mentioned. It is absolutely, that is essential to realize that this is a mixing the holy with the profane here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so nobody knows where Abif actually has been originated from. Uh, many people th think that uh, this, uh, the quote of my father Huram uh, is on Hebrew means Huram Afi. Yeah, and so that was what would be uh, the explanation why it is then being called Huram Abif. So my father Hiram, aha, uh -huh. but nobody knows for sure. This is just a legend, of course. So Hiram Abif is not mentioned in the Bible. This is a legend of the Freemasonry. This is legend here. Yeah, don't misjudge that with truth. It had nothing to do with truth. It's very far from truth. Yeah, this is now um, picking something out of the Bible, and then. Uh, having your own legend around that and building a legend and uh, pretend to be a biblical character. So Hiram Abif or the widow's son, the widow's son, interesting because huh, you see it's a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, but not called Abif, it's just Hiram out of Tyre. <clears throat> is a central character of an allegory presented to all candidates during the third degree in Freemasonry. Hiram is presented as the chief architect of King Solomon's temple. He is murdered inside this temple. Yeah, this is very key to understanding. Yeah, this is very key to understanding here. So we move forward. Yeah. So this is Hiram the Builder. Yeah. And therefore, I was very suspicious when I thought about, well, there is a famous television series of called Bob the Builder, or in German, Bob the Baumeister, which is the same, actually, Bob the Builder. And uh, yeah, uh, why they are naming that character Bob? Because Bob, of course, is also the evil spirit in Twin Peaks. It is a spirit which is, is, is not a real person, actually, in that series, but it is an evil spirit. And that evil spirit is possessing the murder in that series and is only visible in the mirror because it represents the reflection and represents the darker side of that individual looking through the mirror. And the mirror is one of the most dangerous symbols in occult circles. That's why also at the end of the second session of the Twin Peaks television series from David Lynch, Oh, he's very much into uh, meditation, and uh, you can uh, you can assume why. <laughs> um, is now being also possessed with that evil spirit, and is now beginning beginning to uh, be a lunatic. And Bob can also be read in a mirror. So in a mirror uh, image or mirror writing, Bob uh, looks almost exactly the same because the B also looks uh, similar to an eight. And the eight, you see that in a in a in a mirror, looks always the same. This is the assassination site of John F. Kennedy. This is, of course, the temple of the Freemasonry called the Dealey Plaza. Mm -hmm. And you see, now you got the now you got the revelation here, reader revelation. Yeah? This is an allegory 
that not, never happened to all candidates during the initial rite of the third degree in Freemasonry, which is actually the Master Mason, MM. And MM, I've been told, is also um, a synonym, a symbol for 33, Hiram. So Hiram Abiff, not the biblical character, but the legendary character. Hiram is presented as the chief architect of King Solomon's temple. He is murdered inside his temple by three ruffians after they failed to obtain from him the master mason's secret passwords. The themes of the allegory are the importance of fidelity and the certainty of death. The tale of Hiram Abiff is passed down in Masonic lodges under Prince of Third Degree. It starts with his arrival in Jerusalem and is appointed by Solomon as chief architect and master of works at the construction of his temple. As the temple is nearing completion, three fellow craft masons from the workforce ambush him as he leaves the building, demanding the secrets of a master mason. Hiram is challenged by each in turn and as each refusal to divulge the information, his assailant strikes him with a mason's tool, differing between jurisdictions. Yeah, and that's the, that's the key thing. That's the key thing of the assassination of Kennedy, because wasn't it so that also the Warren Commission, as well as the uh, United States House Select Committee on Assassinations, agreed with the Warren Commission, mission means the sending out of agents of Jesuits, that Oswald's three rifle shots caused the injuries that Kennedy and Connolly sustained. Yeah, remember, three ruffians and three attempts on the life, on the killing of the alleged Hiram Abiff in the third degree Masonic Master Mason initiatory right of the Freemasonry. This is key to understanding. Three is the magic number. This is a ritual, a Freemason ritual in a Freemason country, in a Freemason county, in a Freemason city, in a Freemason site, in a Freemason temple made by Freemasons. Because it's part of their religious belief. Everybody who is a high ranking Freemason had gone through this initial rite of the master mason of the killing of the chief architect of King Solomon's temple. Therefore, only three shots are possible in that ritual. It may never be two shots and it may never be four shots. It may never be five or 12 or 25 whatsoever. It has to be stuck with three. Otherwise, the ritual would not function. It is key to understanding that the number of three shots has to do with the initiation into Freemasonry. And therefore, they present you with all this uh, fancy stuff in the Museum of the Temple of the Muses of three shots. Never ever the Warren Commission or the House Commission and Selecti and blah, 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 any official government organization will tell you, oh, no, just uh, we have made some error. It was four shots or two or five or what else. Never ever, because the ritual then won't work. So it has to be three shots. That's key to understanding. And this is just the beginning of all the mess. Because the Warren Commission itself says the number of the shots, the consensus among the witnesses at the scene was that three shots were fired. Huh? But consensus does not mean truth, doesn't it? However, some heard only two shots, while others testified that they heard four and perhaps as many as five or six shots. The difficulty of accurate perception on the sound of gunshots require careful scrutiny of all this testimony regarding the number of shots. The firing of a bullet causes a number of noises and muscle blasts caused by the smashing of the hot gases. Oh, I'm getting tired by reading that. Which propel the bullet into the relatively stable air at the gun's muzzle. The noise of the bullet caused by the shock wave built upon the head, the bullet's nose, and it traveled through the air. And maybe there are some old housewife was then rattled with all his pancakes and something else went down and the child's balloon was being destroyed. Yeah, you can make up any fairy tales. And maybe there was also a lawnmower exploding. Yes, but it has nothing to do with the real reason of the three shots because it has to get according to the Freemason ritual for crying out loud. Yeah. 
the Rowan Commission is a hilarious number of fairy tales. It's just for the exoteric people that they say, oh yeah, finally they have examined something. Finally they came up with something. And then a few, few uh, years later, meaning, meaning, yeah, 1979, 16 years after, no, 16 years after the assassination took place, the <clears throat> pro forma United States House Select Committee on Assassination, they agreed with the Rowan Commission, which was the obvious outcome. There was no other outcome possible than three shots, because otherwise it would not be according to the ritual. So every commission, every committee, every investigation, you can, it's all crap, because they won't tell you the truth. They won't tell you, they will tell you exoteric stuff. And it's just a consensus. It has nothing to do with truth. Caused by the shockwave built ahead of the bullet's nose as it traveled through the air. Uh, yeah. I imagine then Madonna is making a song out of it. Ah, oh, the consensus among the witness. This is hilarious funny, but it has nothing to do with truth. They have to lie in directly in your face. The noise caused by the impact of the bullet on its target. Yeah, can you imagine how many people were shot in this world, in the satanic world, in during the, the war? Nobody would come up with that fancy explanation. Yeah, And no one up to this very day, uh, neither before nor after the assassination of John F. Kennedy came up with a single bullet theory. But we will go into this extensively in a much later session. And you. I think you will get gray hairs when you see all the combinations and all the connections between all the people. It takes much time to go uh, into this, but it really then is, is, I think it's worth the while in the end that you really see how <laughs> these people are lying to you. Each noise can be quite sharp and may be perceived as a separate shot. The tall buildings in the area might have further distorted the sound. Yes. Yeah, but it's a consensus, huh? Does, had not, does not have anything to do with truth. Yeah. And it's very interesting that um, either way you are calculating in uh, Texas, uh, the only outcome is three. For example, this is a very famous pocket calculator by a company of Texas, which is called Texas Instruments. It's the world famous Texas Instruments pocket calculator, TI-30. And mm, I don't know, but you see that 30 is the first rank of the higher Freemasons. Huh? But that's a coincidence, maybe, huh? But you only have to keep in line with the three. Yeah, that is ultimately um, important. Yeah, you have children in the school educated or indoctrinated in Dallas. I think it is mandatory to go to the Texas School Book Depository so that they sleep in their sleep. They know, yes, it was Oswald. It can. There's oh no other solution. The Warren Commission said so, and my teacher said so, and the school said so, and the textbook said so, and the uh, assassination committee said so. Only three shots. Three shots from the mind. Yes. Yeah, you see that it's just programming, it had nothing to do with truth. This is what they display on everybody. And I, th I think it was 500,000 people visiting the Texas School Book Museum every year. Yeah, So 500,000 people get a wrong, <laughs> get wrong history here, wrong account of history. My, 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 yeah. You see, they have to be three shots. This is a German child series where they say you have to uh, choose between the first uh, solution, the second solution, the third solution. But in the Warrant Commission, there's only one solution. That must be three shots. Yeah, and even in that, uh, even in that child children uh, television series, what I was looking in 1972, 73 or 77 here, yeah, okay, 77, when I was about 10 years old, they said, oh yeah, the Dome of St. Peter is at 100 meter. I said, no, not again. Yet even in the child series, yeah, they come up with Catholic things. And, as, and I looked it up and I said, no, it is just 137 meters in height, the uh, St. Peter's uh, dome, the height. Huh? What is one plus three plus seven bread? Hmm, that would be 11. Yes, what a coincidence, huh? 
So please make it simple, yeah. Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. So the 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 world is trying to deceive you. Yeah, but uh, oh yeah, we got another committee. We got experts. We got we got ballistics. Uh, we got uh, movie people. We got uh, experts in physics. Uh, we got experts in sound design and blah blah blah. They're coming up with thousands of things, and you see that oh no, I'm tired. Oh, oh, I stick with the official theory because I'm I'm running out of breath. I'm running out of time. I'm running out of money. I'm running out of uh, interest. Yeah, because it is, they make it uh, on purpose too complicated. But if you know that it is a Freemason temple, then you know that it's initial right, and you know that only three shots are possible. Keep it simple, stupid. And I'm stupid. I have to look up everything. I have to ask everybody. I have to look upon books. I have to read things. Yeah. Michael always says, keep it simple, stupid. Great advice. Hurts my feeling every time. Well, sometimes some kisses are very uh, not tasteful. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I have to laugh. That's yeah, funny. sometimes you have to have humor in it. You see that you can't uh, can't cope with the satanic world if you really look behind it. Yeah. And I think they are doing it on a purpose. We here in Germany or in, in Europe, we have a PISA study, a PISA studies from the University of Pisa, where, oh, by example, Mr. Galileo Galileo was educated. Um, yes, and I think that uh, they have their markers and they are checking the intelligence of the youngsters in the school systems, I think, on purpose, not to educate them, but to see that, oh, when we will to succeed to dump down all the nations. That is my in, absolute inner belief that they are doing that study on the PISA study. I don't know if that is familiar in the United States of America, Brad. Is that familiar? No. No. Uh, of course, I'm not looking into these things okay. as of lately either. Okay. So it might be. Yeah, but there are, is an index, you see that, and they are checking the intelligence. And it is, uh, I think it is severely dropped in the last 20 years because people do not, uh, they cannot calculate in, uh, on their own. They all have to do, their, they have, have to, all dependent on their smartphones. Oh, okay. <sighs> so Hiram Abiff, or the widow's son, we know that is a legendary character, is not Hiram of Tyrus. Because that character, uh, Abif, is not mentioned in the Bible. Yeah? So it is not mentioned in the Bible. Yeah, you see that you can type in Abif and you will get zero results. Yeah? Zero. A Bif with double F. And zero results. Yeah? So this is legend. And now you have to go to the next step. Because in the Freemason, the initial rise of the Master Mason, the third degree, it is the central character of an allegory presented to all candidates during the third degree in Freemasonry, Master Mason. Hiram is presented as the chief architect of King Solomon's temple. He is murdered inside this temple. And this is Didi Plaza. According to the ritual, there's only one possibility, and this is the murdering inside the temple because he was the chief architect of their temple. Of course, JFK was not the chief architect of their temple, but they don't care because it has to go according to the laws of Freemasonry. Therefore, Mr. John F. Kennedy could not be killed in Fort Worth. He could not be killed on Main Street in Dallas, Texas. He must be killed inside the temple. And inside the temple means that um, the temple begins more or less with the Osiris obelisk, which is exactly here. So Kennedy was coming from Main Street, going right on Houston Street, and then with a very sharp left turn, passing the Texas School Book Depository, which was uh, just been uh, leased by the Texas School Book Depository Company in early 1963. Oh, what a coincidence. Yeah. And from that window, and this window of that uh, school book depository, I can tell you, Texas School Book Depository, sixth floor window. I hope you understand that I am just a little bit... Uh, slower than usual. Yeah, so that is the very window here. We will see an enlarged image here. Uh, come on. Yeah, very fine. Yeah, you see uh, 10 layers of bricks 
upon the uh, foundation here. So you got 11 layers of bricks. The first or the upper three layers of bricks, yeah, 11, 10, 9, yeah, three layers of bricks of 11 means 33, yeah, quite easy. Yeah, and then you got another 33. So the shots had to become from this window because that window is uh, 33 and uh, 11 at the same time. Symbology. Back to the script. He is murdered inside this temple. <laughs> and it's very interesting that, um, of course, when you look upon that symbology, he had to pass Isis and Osiris, then take a sharp left turn onto Elm Street, the street of uh, death, or Shin, numerology 300, like a GG 300 license plates of his Lincoln Continental Ford, which is also a 33 degree Freemason, and then was fatally hit on that position. And on that position here, this is the side of the north which we had also been uh, talked about, because in the north there is where the sun is never shining. So that is the death of the sun here. And that is very much alike to the, pro to the position of Abraham Sapruder. If you really think, and this is hilariously funny, this is almost, uh, I have no words for that, because it is only appearing in the German script or in the German Wikipedia, actually, when it comes down to the man called Abraham Sapruder, they say that he was been uh, watching the presidential motorcade in Texas by accident. Yeah? Zufällig means by accident. And if you then know that, oh, he was a member at the Free My Freimaurer Freemason, and if I am informed correctly, he was a 32 degree Freemason at that time. So, of course, a 32 degree Freemason stands by accident on that spot, on that very spot where he has the direct approaching approach to the murder site, to the location when JFK was fatally hit by whomsoever. Of course, to achieve the 32 degree Freemason, you have to be initiated into the third right. You have to be initiated into the third degree. 29 degrees earlier. So, of course, I think that everybody can agree on the fact that he absolutely knew about the ritual of the third degree. And so he knew that three shots or three hits or three murder attempts were necessary, and he knew exactly that it had to happen inside this temple. And that makes me suspicious of the fact that he was positioned exactly there, where this is the North Pergola, and this is happening at the end of, almost the end of the North Pergola. So I would reckon that he exactly knew where to locate himself. Even if he was not part of the assassination, he knew of that ritual. So he knew exactly where to position himself. And I think that we have not to doubt that he was not doing it on his own free will and he had such a great time and that I think he was ordered to do so. Uh, of course, he was also working in that Dell Tex building, if I was remember correctly, but he knew it had to happen inside the temple. Uh, so, <laughs> of course, if you say that it has to happen inside the temple, then Kennedy first has to approach the obelisk and then has to move here, and that is the street of death. And so you can count on yourself how much time you need to do three shots. And so it is absolutely uh, logical that it could not happen here because there was absolutely no time to kill somebody with three shots. So if he knew there were three attempts on the life of Kennedy whatsoever, he said, OK, then uh, it has to be happening inside the temple. And this is inside the temple. And this is the north. This is the Elm Street. So he knew exactly, OK, I have to go to the Elm Street. And then there were three attempts on the murdering of, his, of the life of the president. And then I knew, uh, he knew, OK, there is a, a pedestal where he can locate himself. And it is the end of the North Pergola. So that was the obvious logical position to position himself, a 32 degree Freemason. And this has been executed by three ruffians after they failed to obtain from him the Master Mason's secret password. 
pa, 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 pa. So, but they don't present to you three hitmen. They only present to you one hitman who was then being murdered short time later. So he can't talk. He only said that I did not shoot anybody or I did not kill anybody and I'm just a patsy. And I believe him. He, Lee Harvey Oswald is one of the few people uh, busy in the assassination of John F. Kennedy whom I believe. And this is just the logical conclusion that Sapruda knew exactly what to do because he was a high-ranking Freemason. So he was aware that there was an assassination. And even if he was not in very deeply involved, which I would highly doubt, he would knew that he would have to go to the Elm Street and have to be located because the um, assassination should have taken place in the Inside the temple, inside the temple, that's the condition here, inside this temple. And we will go into this uh, very elaborately in the next session. But three ruffians, it goes much, much more further. But I cannot do that in one session because uh, the entire rituals and all the things in, in it, uh, I, I cannot uh, display because it is very complicated to look at all the things and what they have done. It, it takes months to go into this and all the sources and all to read all the books. But, but to have a solid foundation, look at the uh, Hiram Abiff third degree Freemason rite initiate, initiate, initiation, sorry, initiation by three ruffians. Yeah? So officially, they don't present to three ruffians who have slain the president. They are uh, presenting you one hitman with three shots, but the outcome is the same, three shots or three shots and of course they have to have then the blame on the Harvey Oswald but it goes much much further than that because uh, you also got the resemblance of the three ruffians ah it goes much much further than that yeah remember three ruffians there you go the three trams are three men photographed by several Dallas area newspapers under police escort near the Texas School Book Depository shortly after the assassination of United States President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963. Since the mid-1960s, various allegations have been made about the identities of the men and their involvement in a conspiracy to kill Kennedy. This picture is part of the ritual. This picture is just to mislead the people into believing, oh yeah, the police is now uh, examining the case and they have found these three men. Yes, uh, do you know where they found these three trams? This is the official title of these people, the three trams. In the Freemason rituals, been named three ruffians. These people were found in a train wagon after the shooting behind the Texas School Book Depository. Remember, please, that behind the Texas School Book Depository, there was a railway line, railway station. Mm -hmm. And how these people are being uh, equipped, Brett? Do they look like businessmen? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. So you don't you don't see any white shirt. Yeah, you see three trams. Yeah, even the third one, the last one, um, yeah, with not with the clean trousers. Yeah, so, <laughs> and a brown paper bag. Yeah. Yeah, and also yes, three trams, and that's the purpose of of that picture actually. This is all hidden symbology. These are hidden um, information to the people that they absolutely knew, okay, that uh, that is part of the ritual, that is part of the ritual, and that is part of the ritual. Bam, 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 bam. Everybody who is into Freemasonry, they knew exactly, okay, that has happened and they succeeded. They have secret codes and also these pictures who are then being presented throughout the entire world, then uh, people in Freemasonry who are familiar with that ritual knew exactly what the purpose of that picture was. It has nothing to do with 
the capturing of uh, three people and investigation and so because it is very hilarious funny huh? when you see that a so-called police officer in front with a big rifle and uh, in uniform is then escorting three trams mm -hmm. and up to this very day huh? various allegations have made about the identities of the man how can that be bred how can that be? Hmm. Where are the police records? Where are hmm. the fingerprints? Where are the passports? Where are they? We're talking about 60 years ago and also all the websites are talking to me, uh, explaining that there are allegations about identities of people who have been captured by the police after the assassination of an American president. I think that many people don't wake up when they see obvious things uh, that they're being fooled by the government. You're being fooled. Of course, the police, Dallas police had to know about the identities, even if they would have forged passports, but they would have some names. We, these people are not taking a walk. How just a little bit of fresh air will keep you happy. This is after the assassination of an American president behind the Texas School Book Depository. You see, in, on, on so many occasions that nobody wants to have an investigation. That this is only part of the ritual. Nothing more, nothing less. So people are now being thinking about, oh, could be Mr. Carswell, a CIA agent, or could also be a contract killer Charles Harrison, happening to be the father of Woody Harrison, an actor, an actor, somebody been paid to make false statements, huh? an actor, the son, and also very interesting because that uh, Woody Harrison was playing LBJ. I don't know if you remember that, Harrison. Yeah, official trailer, Lyndon B. Johnson, official trailer, Woody Harrison as Lyndon B. Johnson. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Huh? Isn't that funny? Do you think that is a coincidence that the son of, of some of the three Thrams who been allegedly part of the killing of the president of the United States is then playing the part of Lyndon B. Johnson? My, my, my. So many uh, coincidences there, huh? So these people were not disguised as a tramp hiding in a railroad car. These people were there, there to be picked up by the police. They were waiting to be then displayed to the general public. So yeah, the police is uh, now cleaning the area, but actually it has been a part of the Freemason ritual. Yeah. On the railroad car behind the grassy knoll from where witnesses claim to have heard gunshots. Yes, sure. In September 1982, contract killer Charles Harrison, while wanted for the murder of federal judge John H. Wood, confessed to killing Wood and President Kennedy during a six-hour standoff with police in which he was reported high on cocaine. Of course, afterwards he said, oh yeah, that was just about me being uh, under the drug or what else. Yeah, But what do we expect from all these people who are not... Uh, <sighs> oh, just playing tricks on you. He was part of a ritual. I cannot prove if he has shot, but that's not a thing. You see, all the people who are writing about, the, oh, it could be this, it could be him, it could be otherwise. Yeah, of course, uh, in the in the book uh, uh, Crossfire, the plot that killed Kennedy from Tex Mars, he says, oh yeah, um, three three trams drew national attention when comedian, social activist Dick Gregory and other claims that two of the men were none other than CIA operatives and Watergate conspirators E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. The allegation was repeated in the book Coup d'etat in America. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that E. Howard Hunt was that fellow that a few sessions ago said, yes, uh, we always said with an admiring voice that uh, the um, Jesuits have the best secret service in the entire world. <laughs> so you're speaking with a CIA agent praising the Jesuits and you think, really think that from these people there comes something out of truth? There is nothing true in them. 
these are followers of Satan, these are followers of, of, of the father of lies and the murder from the beginning. These are contract killers, CIA agents. So all their witnesses and testimonies, you see that it, you can throw it in the garbage can. Throw it in the garbage can. It is just part of the ritual, that's all that counts. Now you see, you can keep busy, keep yourself busy with with things uh, till the rest of your life. Yeah, and have, we have finally reached the the end of that session here. Yeah, but it's all a Freemason ritual, and therefore it is not only a Freemason ritual, but it is a religious ritual. So now you know that your president John F. Kennedy was not being killed for the Federal Reserve. Your President Kennedy was not killed uh, because of uh, trouble with uh, LBJ. Your President Kennedy was killed in a religious ritual, in the ritual of the third degree of Freemasonry. That is key to understanding that it can only happen inside a temple. And when it is happening inside a temple, when there is a murder inside a temple, then it is a religious murder. So the reason, the real cause for the killing of Kennedy can only be a religious one. Otherwise, they could have get, gotten rid of Kennedy much more easier, not in the broad daylight, not in the general public, uh, quite more sooner and more easy yeah? with poison. And on any other occasions, not in the broad daylight with many witnesses. But it was been done, had been done, it had been done on purpose. And there's much more to this ritual, which I would like to continue in the next session, because it is very late here and I'm have, having so much, uh, I have so much to do with all this research and that, but I find that very key to understanding that uh, nothing happens by chance or randomly and by accident, it's just happening because it is happening, but everything which happened on that day serves a certain purpose, but it's just been distracted and it has been hidden from the public eye because these people who are usually watching, these are no initiates. They don't know what they are seeing. They're seeing some things and there's a here, there's here a shot and there a shot and there are people riding here. There's a man with an umbrella. There's a marking. There is this. There's a shout. There is this and there's a car and there's a chauffeur and there's a man with a rival and you see that they don't know nothing. This is just all useless information if you don't know the real purpose behind it. And I'm just showing you the real purpose behind it. It is a religious murder here. So he was being murdered by Freemasons in a temple. You knew that from before, but you have to really look upon the Hiram Abiff thing. And this is very key to understanding. And we will go much, much more into this ritual. You sometimes will not believe your eyes what you are seeing. This is just the beginning of the real deep investigation into the assassination of your beloved President John F. Kennedy. And so you see that it's all been religious murder here. A sacrifice. Yeah, the king was sacrificed. The killing of the king. John F. Kennedy, one of the kings of the earth. So I hope we have solved some things up and yeah, we have cleared some things up. Sorry for my bad English today, but I had a very, very, very exhausting day today. But I hope that we can continue next time when we really will blow your windows wide open. And now from now on, I can really tell that we are going into so many details and you will then also connect the dots. And if you draw the same conclusion as me, it's fine. If you got another conclusion, it's also fine to me. I'm just presenting presenting here my line of thoughts and I'm just comparing anything together with the Bible. You know now what 666 actually means. It has to do with the Sun King. It has to do with unprecedented wealth and all points to one church, of course. And then, you know, the speech for the campaign of 1960, where Mr. Kennedy was uh, handing over some interested information. But now we have reached almost 30 sessions about Kennedy. And uh, I think now it gets really interested. Interest, uh, and I think that now it's getting really interested. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, this is uh, this is 
not uh, the average way of looking at uh, a um, a plot to kill a president, right? This is this is something which is definitely uh, you have to, like you just said, you have to be initiated to understand. And uh, for those of us that have had nothing to do with Freemasonry, this is an education, actually, isn't it? An education in the ways in which the serpent uh, operates in these modern times. And um, of course, along with that, when you become a researcher in topics like this, people will accuse you of being uh, involved in in the uh, in the ritual itself, perhaps. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we're here to bring salt and light to God's people, and that involves doing things that aren't of the ordinary, you know, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, Michael. Brett, I can assure you and everybody else that I was never any part of any secret brotherhood or secret organization. Everything. Oh, that I, I know that. You know yeah. that. Everything that I did was uh, asking questions to several people, and sometimes I really... I'm just saying, Michael, yeah. people will accuse us of being part of it because, you know, nobody trusts anyone. I understand that. I don't trust anyone. But, so I was, uh, yeah, I, I just want to point it out. You see that I do that out of love for the truth. Yeah, many yes. researchers, they stop at a certain point because actually they fear for their money, for their profession, they fear for their safety and for their life. But to see that uh, it is our job to tell the truth. Yes, it is. It is That's our right. job because otherwise uh, you see that I was never been uh, looking into this uh, kind of study. Um, because I love the truth and I hate everything, everybody being deceived and you really have Michael. to understand. Yeah. Yes, but you understand as well, Michael, that those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And sometimes we endure that persecution through false accusation. And there's mm. plenty of that on the Internet. Mm. Plenty of it. We see it all the time. Yeah, but, it's, yeah. it's so hard to see that we are just running so uh, mm -hmm. small channels. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and uh, the mainstream and all the controlled opposition also, they are running these massive, massive, massive propaganda channels everywhere and uh, advertisements and smartphones ads and all the stuff you see that they are reaching billions of people. And if you look upon the uh, subscribers of the channels and, and the uh, the number of hits and, 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 and you see that there are many, oh, many, yes. many, many, uh, many people missing and, and so few people who are actually being capable to cope with the truth because the truth really means that our world has been run by satanists who love to kill who love to betray other people who just want to do everything behind closed doors and not want to have people like us exposing all the things right well that's true michael and and that's that's just it is it, that both michael and i are not of uh, any significant wealth in this world. We're not here to sell you anything. We don't have anything for sale. We don't run any kind of merchandise. And, you know, that's the point. We're not trying to give you false information. We're trying to represent the truth as best we can. Sure, we're going to fail here and there. Sure, we're going to get things wrong here and there. But that's what we ask is with grace that you might understand that you listen to us out and hear the whole, the entire uh, presentation. And it, you can't just do this in an evening. You can't just do this in an hour. It takes many, many, many hours to describe all of the intricacies of this. This is not something simple. And of course, that's the kind of society we live in, Michael. They they want, well, it is simple, actually, because we're dealing with a biblical principle. We're trying to maintain that principle and match it up against what the world has presented to us as the truth. Right, Michael? 
Yeah, and you see that here in that example with Kennedy, sorry that I'm so exhausted today, but you see that in that example of Kennedy, that they are mixing everything around. There is no Hiram Abiff in the Bible. And in the Bible, he's been presented as Hiram of Tyrus, and he is not being murdered. You won't find that in your Bible. You can read that from start to finish, but you won't find that. He is not murdered in the Bible. It is just all a big scam. It is just a big mess up to have a kind of ritual and to, to treat the people like, oh yeah, now we have to pretend that to kill you. Yeah, so to, to threaten the people, to control also the Freemasons within, yeah, with fear. So that yes, now you are a master Mason because now you have to face death. You see where it all comes down. It has nothing to do with truth and it has nothing to do with love. So it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with the truth. It is just another horror play for people in the same mindset, oh, in the Antichrist way. mindset. It's a good way to say it, Michael, and I think we'll just close it down at that, huh? Mm -hmm. And next time we hope to take this to the next as Michael said, the next step, which is, you know, to be revealed. I don't know it. Michael hasn't told me much about it, but the important thing is, is to know that we as believers in Christ, having been born again, not born of the flesh, but born of the spirit, we recognize what the Bible's trying to tell us. We adhere to that the best we can and we match it up against what we're seeing and what what we've been told and we know that things don't match up they're way off and it's very interesting michael that you bring this up because it seems to me that this is just the same pattern that all kinds of other things have happened as well that just it's all insider um secret so-called secrets uh, that are really no secrets at all. They're just uncomfortable things that uh, many of us don't want to endure and listen out because, yeah, we're just not having enough time and not have enough energy. Look, I had a really stressful week too, Michael. I feel about the same. I'm really exhausted right now. And um, yeah, yeah. It's probably the last thing our, our brethren are going to want to hear. But listen, that's part of how this works. That's how Satan maintains his initiative to, you know, what what he's been, uh, what can we say, anointed to do on the earth, which is to try and uh, torment and and to kill. Uh, kill the innocent people um, for no reason, really. But I'm not saying Kennedy was innocent, but I'm just saying that he did uh, expose quite a bit of what he was not supposed to. He was speaking out against things he, he probably... Uh, uh, never intended to speak out against, but when he, when he found himself in that position, he acted accordingly. So, you know, I I guess everyone looks at it a little different, Michael. You know, I, I wasn't alive when Kennedy was shot, and I don't think you were either. This was long before we were born, or not long, shortly before we were born, but still it's had a huge impact on the world at large, because what this means is um, we can kill whom we want in the, the ritual we want and give the explanation we want and no one questions it. That's the real problem, isn't it? That's the real problem. And and of course, the news has continued in that same trajectory ever since this these days. And um, yeah, there's just too many things that happened in this time frame of 1963 that are, you know, impacting us still today and will continue to uh, 
so thanks for your time, Michael. Thanks for putting all the energy into the study. Looking forward to the next sessions. And uh, is that all you want to say, Michael? Or is there any closing comments? No, just want to say thank you for your time and uh, I hope next time I will be more fit. But it needs to go out. It needs to be spread upon the uh, the real people who wants to hear the truth. Yeah, you, you can start your research from that point and uh, I hope that I can provide you with so much information and everything will point to the religious uh, background and not any federal laws or something like that. This is all deception. Everything which is going on in this world has a religious background. So the Bible is absolutely correct in First Samuel 8 mm -hmm. and Second Psalms. It's absolutely correct. You see that if you have understood the Bible correctly, you don't need any worldly explanation. You don't only need to follow my 100 sessions of Kennedy, but maybe it is very interesting to draw other peoples to the Bible, uh, maybe with the case of Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have that example uh, among uh, some brothers, yeah, that uh, a couple which uh, I had the pleasure to meet, um, they were drawn to the Bible with that, with the series uh, Satanic Music. Uh, uh, agenda and then uh, he, he, her boyfriend was being drawn to that by the um, conspiracy series in, in German but nevertheless yeah, so that is the purpose that we can approach it from several angles we will not reach uh, the majority of people that is not that would not be true uh, possible because the Bible only depicts the narrow path <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, you see, that is our duty on the Sabbath to do something for the Lord in return for our life. That's at least my uh, position here. So thank you very much, Brett and Maranatha. Thanks, Michael. Yes, I was just going to look that up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just been such a stressful week this week uh so much going on as far as work and schedule and yeah it's um it's gonna be this way um yeah matthew seven fourteen. that's what i wanted to read because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it that's what michael's talking about it's not about a huge amount of people here. It's about a few that find it. And precious is it that that's the truth. Yep. And yeah, we can read a little more. Let's let's uh, let's start. Uh, oh, wow. Matthew seven uh, is so good. Well, really, we should all be reading the Bible all the time because there's just so much more to it. Um, you know, the b very beginning of the chapter, verse 1 starts out, judge not that ye be not judged. I mean, that's just a huge principle that we can think about in and of itself. Um, essentially, you know, I think we've all felt this before, Michael. Um, in our childhood, we've done something silly and stupid or you know, spoke some lies and, and yeah, we made false accusations and uh, we were wrong and someone has corrected us. But in the process, we've made enemies. And that's what this verse is about. Judge not that ye be not judged because when you judge someone wrongly, guess what? They see it and then they mark you and uh, they, uh, they might lash out, they might not. They might not ever talk to you um, ever again. Impossible to say. Because it says here in verse 2, For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou that the mote is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye. <laughs> so uh, I think we just leave it here, Michael, because we're both quite exhausted, but we're just asking our brethren here, 
just open the Bible and start reading passages like this. And it explains to you without any of us having to do any work, uh, just the Lord and you and his comforter will come once you recognize that, yes, being born again is necessary. It is a requirement. It is not an option to be part of the brethren. You must be born again. It's just that simple. Nothing to argue here. So we'll catch up with you next time. Maranatha.